Hello. All right. Hey, if y'all come on in, we'll get started. We'll go ahead and get started. We've got a special guest with us here tonight. Not really. But anyway, we've got the guy that's going to be running for the district rep. And so he asked for a couple of minutes of our time. So uh, come on up. Some of you guys, new guys, I don't know. I just kind of want to introduce myself. I'm Todd Taney. Uh, no. Uh, there's two of us running for the District 10 rep, which comprises of four chapters, and the voting starts online with Tasso on Monday and goes for two weeks. So I would appreciate y'all's vote. And if you have any questions or anything, you can call me or meet me, get me after the meeting, and I'll be happy to answer any questions so I don't take up time here. All right, so thanks, Todd. Todd's a local guy that's running, so give him your support if you can. Uh, Jeremy, you come on up. Hey, it's awesome. So we got a few people here. We'll hope some of these are watching online, but I wanted to thank some officials for covering scrimmages, 5A and 6A. Um, that was a task. Uh, we had some officials, a lot of the same ones, step up. So we had a 
uh, Jimmy Adcock, uh, Jolly, uh, Easterly, all covered a, an assignment up in Ennis, is that right? I think I saw Easterly, okay. Uh, Richard King's crew stepped up and covered a pine tree scrimmage. Uh, Melon Tree's crew covered one as well, and of course, a canna. Uh, Jamal uh, Fatigue, Clint Yates, and Kelly Talent helped out at Robert E. Lee. And then we, yeah, we all know. And uh, Clay, Clay, myself, and Alandis Weaver um, covered uh, Waxahachie on Friday. So uh, that was a challenge, uh, covering those games during the season. So just want to say thanks to those. A little bit around Arbiter. So make sure if you, if you are not available, if your schedule has changed, please update that in Arbiter with your blocks. Let's talk a little bit about sub RC travel. Uh, as you all know, I do my best to keep you as close to home as possible. Uh, that's the easiest way to assign it. If you live on the perimeter of our chapter, be prepared to travel. If you live in an area that doesn't have a lot of officials, so if you don't have a lot of co-officials that happen to live in your area, be prepared to travel uh, or be prepared to, to work similar sites each week. It doesn't make sense to, to drive you to another site and drive someone to your site just for the sheer purpose of avoiding tax implications. Um, pay your taxes or throw your W-9s away or whatever. So just know that I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to uh, assign it the easiest and most efficient way possible, limiting your travel when possible, but there may be weeks that you have to travel. Uh, I don't know if we have any here, they're, I think they're actually working tonight, but TISD, TISD has requested chain crews for junior high games on Monday and Tuesday. Those are played at, uh, all played at Rose Stadium, and they pay $75 for the two games, no mileage. Uh, so if you happen to work those, bring a pay sheet, it's assigned through Arbiter, um, and submit that there, but it's, it's easy money. If you'd like to work those and you're in the Tyler area and wanna, wanna work those games, please let me know. So I don't have to use the same guys each week. Uh, I think that's it. So I just appreciate it. We've we've done a pretty good pretty good job covering everything. I'd like to get some more officials on the field and get four at sites where we can. So if you're available, please let me know. We've had too many uh, with three, and uh, thankfully none with two, at least for very long. So thanks. All right, thanks. Yeah, this past week was a fun week for all of them. We had, I think, everybody that was available working this past week. So thank everybody for stepping up and doing that. Uh, is Mike here? No. Okay. Lance? Oh. Does Larry or Josh? Yeah, I didn't see them here. Thank you. Okay, uh, just a couple things. Uh, so we just we've got some I've got a call today, uh, emails, so forth, calls, emails. Uh, one of the districts has um, gone to what they call a flex schedule. So starting next week, not this week, but next week, uh, like if you had a game schedule for next Friday the ninth, that game is going to be played on the eighth on Thursday. And then if you had any school in that district, the next week it's gonna be played on a Wednesday, then a Tuesday, then a Monday. So you could, you could have a varsity game on a Monday night or a Tuesday night. So we'll let you, Josh and I have the, the schedule and we'll let you know, we'll re Josh will put it in Arbiter uh, and let you know where, what day you're going. So, so just kind of be aware of that. There won't, that's not a mistake on Arbiter, it's, it's, it's really gonna happen. And that may be happening uh, on some other districts. We don't know that, but but uh, <clears throat> they're out there trying to be creative in case something you know something happens and they have to to cancel games. So anyway, just be on the lookout for that. Uh, another thing, uh, kind of touches on what Chad just said. You know, it's football season, 
and Thursday and Friday nights is our, our football nights. And so I'm, I'm telling you, like last week, we were, we were scrounging to get people. When, when Chad and I have to work chains, you're hitting the bottom of the barrel, okay? So, so uh, uh, you know, we just, you, you know, just don't plan anything, especially this year. I mean, we're getting games on Thursday, getting games. We got Crossroads on one Friday morning. You got a call from Crossroads. They got a game. So, you know, in a normal year, if you don't have anything by Wednesday or Thursday, chances are unless somebody gets hurt in a sub-varsity game on a Thursday night, you're probably okay. But, but this year, it's, man, it's all hands on deck. So just kind of keep that in mind. You know, we, we need you. We need everybody. Uh, I think... Josh, is it uh, a week? Next week's okay, and the next week's better, but then it gets heavy again in about three or four weeks. We're going to have another week like we had last week. So uh, uh, we need everybody. We had to borrow two people from uh, East Texas last week to work chains, so that's how bad it was. Uh, calls from coaches, uh, getting a few. Uh, got another good call on a six man crew. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. We got a, on a game that we called. Uh, well, I got a call on a six-man crew, and also got a call from uh, coach uh, that we covered a game uh, with the, for the SFA chapter, and he, they were really pleased with the job that we did. So, uh, you know, that was Oscar uh, Oscar's crew, I believe, and so uh, really kudos to them for representing the chapter the way they the way they did. Um, one other thing before I forget it. We do have a special guest here. Larry Langford's here, and this is the first time he's been here in a long time. So, Larry, standing back there, it's really glad to, we're really glad to see you, and uh, you know, just uh, hope you can keep that recovery going strong. You're looking good. So, uh, anyway, it's really good to see him. Okay, one of the things the coaches are, are they, they want all they want is consistency. You know, they they talk about consistency. You know, if it's, and, and here's the deal. You know, if it's not pass interference in the first quarter, it's not pass interference in the fourth quarter. And if it's not holding on the 47 yard line, it's not holding on the seven yard line. Or if it is holding on the 47 yard line, it's going to be holding on the seven yard line. So, you know, just that's all they want is to us to be consistent in our calls. And, and in some of the stuff, I, some of the plays I've looked at, uh, we can be we can be consistent, but then there's some times that we're, you know, we're a little we're not as consistent. So just keep that in mind, you know. And another th in some of the things that we're missing uh, are just basic things like, uh, you know, like blocks. Uh, you know, it wouldn't hurt to go over the blocking rule every now and then, you know, just in your pregame, uh, just go over that, read it. Read it, uh, you know, when you get home tonight. Go, hey, I don't want to look at the blocking rule. Uh, and and uh, uh, what else was it? Uh, the blocking rule, block, blocking. Of course, kicks I talked about the other day. So just be aware of some of these things when you're preparing for your game on a weekly basis. One thing on ejections. Let's, you know, if a young man, if a young man wants to be, uh, wants to disqualify himself, we're there to help him. You know, we're there to, to help him. If he, wants, if he wants to do it, then we're there to help him. But let's just really be, you know, because here's the, here's the rule. If, a, if he gets ejected from a game, then he has to stay out the first half of the next game. So he's going to be, he's going to be uh, out that first half of the next game. So, you know, let's, let's make sure that, uh, uh, let's make sure the ejections are, are there. I'm not saying they're not, but... Uh, Let's just make sure that we've got good ones. Um, and that's really it. I mean, there's, everybody's doing a great job. Really, we're doing a great job uh, from six-man all the way up to, to 6A. We're doing great. Just keep up the good work. We've got a lot of new guys working. They're working chains. Some of them are working on the field. So uh, let's just keep up the work there. And uh, that's about it. So... Oh, incident reports. Yeah, I did have that down here. Okay, whenever you, uh, it has been pretty good. Okay, we're we're getting incident reports, which are 
We need to get them. And for the most part, they've been really good. You're, you're being concise. You're, you're telling what's going on, what went on, and the numbers and so forth. We had, ha, did have a couple that, uh, that had to, uh, to have, they had to redo them, but uh, they took care of it. Everything went, you know, everything was filled out finally. But, uh, you know, go ahead and do an incident report if something happens. Don't, don't be afraid to, well, if I, to turn a, if I turn a coach in, he's not going to use me next week or next year or whatever. Hey, that's, that's how things get changed. That's how things get, you know, made a lot better for everybody. Because if you don't, we're, we're losing officials. You can say, you know, you can say what you want, but, but a lot of times, and we're, we had an incident report turned in on a Thursday night, la Thursday night game last, uh, last week. So, uh, but anyway, keep it up. Keep up the good work. And, uh, you know, if, it, if it's worth, and if you don't know if you need an incident report or not, give Chad or me or Josh or someone a call and we'll help you. We'll, we'll help you decide and, and uh, go from there. So keep up the good work. All right. Thanks, Larry. Uh, Mike, do you have anything? No. All right. Lance. All right, we're going to go over some uh, just eight plays, guys, and we're going to look at some different views of a couple of these plays. Um, a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, so when coaches are sending in films, they'll you know they'll send in a film into Larry or Josh or Chad or whoever, and they'll say, "Hey, play 84, 115, 132, and 17. Look at these plays. This is what we thought. This is what we think happened." Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not, uh, after you look at it. But <clears throat> from, the, from the films that I've seen, I would say probably over 50% for sure have been blocking issues, okay, where we are not picking up uh, blindside blocks, uh, crackbacks, illegal block below the waist. Um, <clears throat> and I, I showed a video earlier this year on blindside blocks just, just to get everybody on board because it's still kind of a new rule um, and I'm going to show you some clips here of some that uh, that we've had this year uh, that kind of lead me to believe that this not being coached out of the game yet okay um, and we're going to go through some of those but when you're looking at these I also want <clears throat> to be thinking about uh, during these plays who is who is going to have the responsibility of seeing that and sometimes it may be more I'm hoping that it is more than one official that can pick up on some of these uh, illegal actions, okay? Um, and we'll talk through those as we go through. This play here, I believe, <clears throat> this is gonna be a, an illegal block. You can go ahead and play it, it takes a little bit, Stephen. <clears throat> this is gonna be an illegal block below the waist, okay? So we have a free kick, right? A free kick, what can, what can neither team do during a, during a free kick? They cannot block below the waist at any point, right? So we're going to watch this play here, and it happens right at the point of attack. And I'm going to key it here in just a second. All right, so we want to watch this guy right here. The guy that's got the ball just ran, is about to run right beside him. If you want to watch this, go ahead and click it, Stephen. He's going to cut that guy down. <clears throat> the next view actually has a pretty decent view, and I wanted us to watch this view here also. Um, while it's elevated, if you're an umpire, when you curl into the, into the field, this is, this is the kind of view you're going to see on this play. So you can picture this here, but if we stop it, once we get, uh, get down here, we can talk about. So that guy started right here. <clears throat> this defender started in the middle of the field, right? So let's talk about, in a five-man crew, who's going to have this guy? Who's going to be watching this guy? Because he's going to go attack one of the inside defenders that's going after him, okay? So think about it from a five-man crew. Okay, you got your line judge and your referee. Who are those guys' keys coming down? They're going to have the outside guys, right? Typically the, the outside two, maybe three, depending on how many is on each side of the kicker. Okay, this is going to be an interior guy here. So who's going to pick this guy up? Toby, umpire? Right? He's curling in. 
<clears throat> the line judge could probably help out here. If the referee's on this side over here, then he could have, we might be able to have some help from the other wing. But somebody's got to get, this is, a, this is a big time, this is a big time foul. Okay, right at the point of attack, cuts him down below the waist. Go ahead. And then we'll get it one more time from the wide angle here. <clears throat> I believe it's number, is it 16? So the guy that's on this side of the kicker is the one I believe gets hit or gets cut. So the umpire's coming in from the other side. All right, so probably maybe your back judge here, back judge coming down to get that. But you would think about that. Go ahead and pause it, Stephen. You think about that, though, when you're watching this, guys, and, and <clears throat> the coaches have not been overly eager to share films for some reason this year. We're not getting near as many as we were. Uh, I've worked four games. I've gotten two. I know a lot of other crews, have, they haven't gotten any. Um, Larry's requesting them. Josh is requesting them. We're kind of at the mercy of the coach sending those films in. Um, but when you get the chance to watch film, especially of your game, um, those are things, you don't, don't just look at what we missed or what we got or the action. When I review film, I'm making sure that myself and my crew, that we're in the right places at the right times or where we're supposed to be. That's the most important part of, a, of reviewing a film, making sure your mechanics are right. We'll figure this out. Okay, we can coach this up, okay? But we gotta be in the right place at the right time. So I wanna think about this when we're watching these films of who's gonna see this. Go ahead. All right, so we've got a punt play. All right, punt play. All right, antenna's up. What can we not do on a change of possession? Can't block both the ways, okay? Antenna's up. Anytime we have change of possession, anytime we have a punt play, in particularly a punt play, okay? <clears throat> we gotta be thinking in our mind, blindside blocks, okay? Blindside blocks, just, we automatically know we can't block both the ways on a change of possession, on a punt, or on a free kick, right? Start thinking about blindside blocks in that same conversation. Okay, let's put that right beside the block and blow the waist because you can't do it. Okay, and this is where this is where most of them happen. We talked about that, right? Most of our blindside blocks are happening on change of possessions. Most of them. Okay, go ahead. We're going to get another view of that also here in just a second. And that was a big time, a big time hit. You're going to see it real good on this uh, on this end zone here, okay? So you see the white team coming down, white uniforms are coming down. So the play's going to go that direction, and we've got guys what we call swimming upstream, right? So the play's coming this direction, and we've got some players going this direction. Nothing good is going to come from that, okay? He is looking for a guy to hit. Go ahead. They want those hits out of the game. They want them out of the game, guys. Okay? And they're going to continue to do this until they start seeing fouls and we start getting coaches' attention to, st to start trying to coach this out of the game. Okay? I'm going to show you some clips here in just a second. <clears throat> Go ahead. Yeah. So I'm going to show you some clips here in just a second from my game Friday night where we had three, I think we're going to count three, blindside blocks that none of us got, okay? And two of those, or actually I think maybe all three of those, no, two of those were on scrimmage plays. So it's not always a change of possession, okay? But there's things that we're going to look at here in just a second um, to kind of give you an idea of where are, we going to, where are we most likely to see blindside blocks, okay? Change of possessions are always going to be one, right? Okay? Another time is when, and we have some examples of this, is when they're running a, a running play to the outside, either side, okay? And we've got the offense trying to set the edge. So we get a, a slot guy or a wide out guy will come over and try to get that linebacker. They know they can't cut them below the waist, right? But what they do is they try to come in and blow them up, okay? Which is perfectly legal if you have your hands out here. If you can, you can still go block that linebacker, but you gotta have your hands out in front, right? Okay? 
But those are the two biggest ones that we're seeing right now. And I said, <clears throat> these are from multiple games, multiple coaches, and a lot of the films that, we've, that have been sent in that I'm looking at, a lot of the complaints are, hey, we have a BSB, blindside block, on play this. So we're seeing it a lot, guys. So I'm trying to get us looking at plays that we're seeing a lot of right now, okay? <clears throat> this play here, we're going to have an illegal uh, block below the waist. And it's going to come, I believe it's coming from the back, okay? But when it pauses, I want to talk about something here. Go ahead, Stephen. All right. So here's a good discussion. If you don't have this discussion with your crew, this would be an excellent pregame this week, okay? And you need to have this discussion. If you're a referee or a wingman, this is a very good discussion to have, okay? When is the referee going to give up the ball carrier? And when does the wingman take the ball carrier away from the referee? Okay, I can tell you on my crew, I tell my wing guys, I've got the ball carrier all the way to the line of scrimmage. You've got everything in front of you. I'll take him all the way to the line of scrimmage. Once he gets to the line of scrimmage, he's yours. Okay, I'll take care of the ball, especially if he's threatened. I'll take care of that <clears throat> up to the line of scrimmage, and then I'm handing him off to you. But you've got to have that conversation. Otherwise, we end up with the referee and the wingman both watching what? The ball carrier, right? Which is fine. I, I promise you, we've all been guilty of it. I promise you we have. I know I have, both as a referee and a wingman, okay? <clears throat> but we've got to make sure we get these blocks out in front. And this guy here is about to go back inside towards the original position of the ball and cut the guy low, okay? So who in this play, who's going to see this? Who, who's going to see this block right here? Just throw it out. Your line judge? So we've got, the, we've got the ball carry on the 30-yard line right now. The block's going to happen on about the 36. Okay? So my referee, as a referee, me right now, <clears throat> I'm, probably taking care, I'm probably taking care of the ball right now. I might peek because he's not threatened at all. I might peek over here at some blocks. But for the most part, my responsibility is still on that ball carrier. The umpire, he's got some guys in between him uh, and where the block occurs. The back judge, because he was a back that came out, he could probably help if he sees it, but it's not his original key. Okay, so he's going to have to pull off his original key to see this. So really, I think the responsibility is going to lie, lie between the line judge and the referee if he can peek and see it. Okay, go ahead and play it. You get another good view of it here. Go ahead, Stephen. Again, good discussion. We see the foul, yes, it's a foul. Um, but more importantly, when I see something like this, especially on my crew, I always ask who can see this and who can help? Who can see it and who can help? Okay, and a good discussion to have in this situation is when am I handing the ball carrier off and when is the wing taking, him, taking responsibility for him? Okay. All right. You can go to the next one there, Stephen. All right, this is our game Friday night. <clears throat> we're going to have, uh, we're actually going to have two when you talk about both. All right, so we're going to have a blind side block right here, okay? And <clears throat> above that circle, you can see on about the 25-yard line where the ball carrier is running, you see a jersey, a blue jersey there. He's actually going to hit number seven in the back as he's making the tackle, okay? So I get some opinions from you guys here. When y'all see that, I want, I, want to, I want y'all to look at both of these things. So we're gonna watch this guy right here, that circle, he's fixing, we're fixing to have a blind side block here. And then the number nine up there at the top of the screen about the 24 yard line, he is going to actually hit number seven, who's going after the defender in the back as he's making the tackle, okay? And we'll watch this multiple times so you can see both of them. Go ahead and play it, Steven. You can watch it from this one. You can watch it from this one to either one. Okay. So we definitely have a blind side block, right? So I'm gonna get your get some opinions on the block in the back. Are we throwing that 
Dunkling. Andy, are you going to throw that? No? We're leaving it alone. Okay? So really here, what we needed to have, what we should have had, was that big blind side block here. This was a, uh, a message actually from uh, John Teague who reviewed this film as well, saying the same thing, reiterate basically the same thing that Andy said, is that we are not gonna have a block in the back on that because he was making the tackle at the point of, at the point of attack right there, actually made the tackle, I actually probably helped him make the tackle. All right, Stephen. No, you're fine. All right, I'm, get your, I'm not saying this is or is not, but this is a good one to look at, okay? This is a good one to watch. Um, we'll get some opinions here. Frisbee, Dunklin, everybody. I want y'all to watch this. I want to try to get your opinion on this. Do we have a blindside block on this kid right here? Go ahead and play it. Okay, we'll watch the next view also. Y'all take a look at this one. All right, watch this guy at the bottom of the screen. What do you think? What do y'all think? Watch this one again. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. Right. No, we're not. And we're not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the key word you said there was egregious. So, and I agree with you guys. I don't believe this is a blind side block either. Yeah. But it's good to look at a play like this versus some of the other ones that we've seen. So you can kind of tell the difference. Okay. It's good to look at these right here. These right here, we're not throwing on. Okay. We passed on it Friday night. I would still pass on it today, okay? But it's good to look at the difference between, yes, I would say that was a blind block, but I wouldn't say that was an egregious or a forcible, I'm trying to punish this kid when I could have just stuck my hands out and blocked the kid. Does that make sense? So, yeah. You know, there was a play a couple of weeks ago where he was like a deep leader, you know, which, which you know, when it happens, your radar goes up to target him, it might be targeted. Right. right. Yep. Coach was saying this should have been targeted. 
hard thing, and it, it, and it shouldn't have been because it, it's a good hard hit. A good hard hit, yep. And, and that's, you're going to have, you're going to have good hard hits in football. Yeah, and I think you can see that on Saturday and Sunday when you watch, you know, some of these college games or NFL games, and you see this hit and you go, my goodness gracious, this kid's fixed it. There's a fine coming, or he's fixing to get tossed, and then you watch the replay and you go, well, it's actually shoulder to shoulder. It actually was a pretty good hit, just a hard football hit. And just like uh, Andy said, we're not, we can't officiate hard hits. This is a, this is a physical game, right? This is what they want. What they are trying to eliminate is unnecessary injuries from egregious, forcible hits, especially above the shoulders, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think when the targeting rule first came out, okay, it was if you have targeting, you have an ejection, right? <clears throat> and I think for officials, that made it really hard on us because we don't get replay, right? So we have to see this live, right? We have to see it live and we have to make a decision right there. I'm not saying at that second, but you have to process it and then make a decision. And that decision is going to cost the kid a football, you know, the rest of that football game and possibly the team the game if he is, you know, a, a stud safety or corner or whoever, linebacker or whatever it is. So they came back out and said, well, you know what? We think that the ejection is so heavy on the officials that they're just not calling it because they don't want, they don't want that kind of, uh, you know, consequence on a kid if they're not 100% sure, right? So they came back and said, okay, well, we're going to allow, we're going to have a non-flagrant now where we still have targeting, right, but it's not going to be a disqualification. It's just going to be 15 yards and he hits two of them. Right, so they're actually helping us on that, to to be a little bit more lenient on saying that's close enough that I got to get that one, you know. Yeah, which is good. That's why it's there, man. That's why they wrote, that's why they they wrote the rule. All right, go ahead, Stephen. All right, this is going to be. An illegal block below the waist, and I'll ask the question here in just a second on why this is illegal, okay? Stephen, if you don't mind backing this up for just a second for me. Yeah, we're going to talk about that also. I right, go ahead and... <clears throat> so the, the player that actually is going to make this block is the quarterback, okay? So we have a broken play that's going to go to the right, and he's going to turn around and go back to the left. The quarterback says, you know what, I'll go be the lead blocker for you. What does a quarterback probably not know? the blocking rules, right? He's just looking to make a block on a kid. That's all he cares about. Let me get, let me get my hands or my helmet or somebody, something on a kid to free this runner up. He doesn't know the blocking rules, okay? Which he creates a foul here, and we're going to talk about why it's a foul. Go ahead. There you go. So we snap the ball in the 50. He makes that block about eight yards downfield, which is an illegal block below the waist. Did you get that? We did not. This is my crew. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, we had a long film discussion, by the way. And we're going to continue to have long film discussions. Okay. Yeah. He's apologized a lot in the last 48 hours, so I'm just going to tell you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, go ahead and play this one here. I think this is going to be the. I think we're going to have a chop block here. I think it's this one. Nope. It's going to be the. Nope. All right. So, <clears throat> what we have here, I mentioned it earlier. So, we're going to have a, a, an illegal blindside block here from a scrimmage play, okay? And this is what I was talking about when those guys try to set the edge. All right. So, the tackle's trying to set the edge on the end. And the, the wide out, he's trying to set an edge for the linebacker so this guy can get back, turn the corner and go, okay? So I want you to watch this wide out at the top of the screen. Guys, this happens just like this, okay? But it's somebody, this is somebody's key on the football field, right? This is somebody's key. So watch number eight there at the top, top of the screen. Okay, if you will back it up to that to the last one here, 
I'm going to talk about this. Hit it again, and then let it, it'll pause where it, all right. So, we talk about indicator, indicators of targeting also, right? Okay, Now I'm not saying we've got target on this, but if you look at this, look at this play, we can talk about indicators. So we have the white out up top, who's going down, and we have him here, right? Crown of his helmet, okay? And when he makes contact with that defender, his helmet does this, okay? So typically when we talk about targeting, if he's hit anywhere in this region right here, his head's gonna do what? It's gonna go down, okay? So if you see a defender, if you see a hard hit and you see that defender's head go down, we probably do not have targeting. So it's probably below, okay? But if you see that head go back or to the side or up this direction, he probably got him somewhere in this area above the shoulders. So if we have an indicator of leading with the crown, a crouch and leap, leaving his feet, those things right there, that ought to be a trigger in our mind that, that that's an indicator of targeting, okay? So he actually gets his kid pretty good. And this is, he does it twice. He's actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's being coached to do this. Okay, go ahead, Stephen. So you don't think you so Jeremy says that he doesn't think we have a blind side block here. I, I, just, I know that on Friday night I'm not calling that. So let's talk about what what's a blind side block. Brad, what's the what's the blind side block? What's the definition of a blind side block? Out of the field of view. Okay, so we have flagrant or uh, egregious contact outside the view of the opponent. Okay. So, I actually sent the, the BSB with a question mark wasn't my note. That was John Teague's note who actually reviewed this film and said BSB. And I, I agreed. I said, yeah, I think we do have a blindside block on this play. Who, how many of y'all think we have a blindside block on this play? I've got a blindside block. Who thinks we don't have a blindside block? Okay. So, we got Brad says it is and his line judge says it's not. See? <laughs> And that's, that's why we talk about these things, okay? That's why we talk about these things. I can tell you this. I think if you throw that flag on a Saturday and your evaluator is looking at you, I do not think you're getting an IC. I do not think you're going to get an incorrect call on this. Okay? I think you will get a – I agree. I think you would get a correct call on this, on this play right here. And even if it is marginal, even if it's close, what do we talk about when it comes to safety? What are we going to err on? We're going to err on the side of safety, guys. That guy had no, he was looking at the runner. He's not seeing this block come from this side. That guy lowers his head. He's got the crown of his helmet. He is going after this guy. He could have just as easily stuck his hands out there and blocked him. But that's not what he was trying to do. He was actually trying to hit him hard. He was trying to punish that kid. No, he's got to, he's coached to run out there and get him. Block him. Yeah, and then you're going to call holding. No, I'm not going to call holding on that. From a coach's standpoint, it's hard. Like, I'm looking for, like, that's where your first line side block of the series where he was a red team. I remember. Yeah. I mean, he cleaned it. Yeah, he uh, decleated him. But not all blind side blocks have to be decleated. Will you agree with that? That, it has to be decleated. I'm trying to sell Jeremy Gunnels that this is a blind side block. So, egregious, to me, that's what Go ahead and play it one more time, Stephen. One more time, Stephen. <laughs> okay, we're in the next play we're going to look at. <clears throat> it's going to be a, a chop block. Okay. We're, Go ahead, Toby. 
No. No, you sure don't. You sure don't. No, he doesn't. If you can get if you can get it on a different view, this is a long you're 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 a long way away, but if you actually tighten it up, he actually gets hit right here. Comes right underneath his chin. His head does this right his head does this right here. You can have a blind side block from the 10 2. You can absolutely have a blind side block from the 10 and 2 position, guys. <laughs> I can tell you, uh, th in my opinion, as that is a blindside block. I want my crew calling that. Okay. I, I I can't get a good view on the target. I can just tell you where his head's going. Yeah. Yep. You could. Nine one three targeting. Yep. Yep. Again, guys, I <clears throat> I don't have a pr I. Lance Mathis played football. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that hit. But they wrote a rule saying you can't do that anymore. And what did they task us to do what on the football field? Enforce the rules. Okay? Agree with them or not, I don't agree with Aiden the runner either. And don't get any ideas, Toby. You're not throwing Aiden the runner this week. Okay? But it's in the rule book. Okay? So, my personal opinion, I've got a blindside block. Brad, you got a blindside block on this? Frisbee? Yeah. Yeah. Larry, you got one? What do you got? You got a blind side block on that? All right. <laughs> Absolutely. Because he's going to do it again here in just a second. One hundred percent agree, one hundred percent agree, and that's the thing that that's what I was talking about. Blindside block, these kind of hits, targeting blindside blocks. We get a split second to make that decision, right? A split second. It's not like holding, where you can see a guy holding on to him, and here comes the runner, and is he going to take him to the ground? Is he going to turn him and jerk him and all that? You can kind of see, you can develop a hold. You can't develop a blindside block. Okay, You're, it's either boom there or no, it's not. Okay. So they're tougher to call. And, yes, they are judgment. Like he said, from a consistency standpoint, that's what coaches are wanting to see. That's why I want, as a group, to talk about these, talk about these things. And we're never all going to agree. 150 officials, you know, and if they were all in this room and I asked them, is that a blindside block, I'm going to have 75 say yes and 75 say no. I'm standing right next to one that is not agreeing with me right now, which is perfectly fine. But we got to talk about these things so we can kind of get a feel on, is that or is that not a blindside block in your opinion? Okay, by definition of the rule, that is a blindside block. Okay, all right, next, next one. All right, so we're going to have a chop block on this play right here. And more importantly, <clears throat> do you agree with that one? There we go. So we got a guy up high, back comes in, hits him low. We got a, we got a chop block there. More importantly, who's who's going to see that, guys? Think about those. Who's going to get that right there? So go back, pause it right there. Go back, go back a second. Uh, pause it at the front of the play, Stephen. All right. 
So who we got? We got uh, two, four, six. Yep. So we got the line judge or the referee is going to have to pick this one up, right? Yep. Line judge or referee? I agree with that. Yep. I got line judge or referee on this one. All right. Go ahead, Stephen. I would say on this one here, and when I reviewed this film, I took responsibility for this one. This one's on me, okay? And the only reason I say that is we have a pass play, okay? So I tell my line judge wings, okay, the first thing I'm looking at once that ball snapped is my tackle because he's going to tell me if we're going to do what. Are we running? If he goes down and starts blocking, we got a run play. If he stands up and starts doing this, what are we doing, right? More importantly, I've got to tie it in on this end right here, okay? All right, so when he comes up and starts doing this, and then that back's coming around, and my deep fit or my uh, my wide out on this play right here, he's going downfield. My attention is going to this wide out as a line judge. That's where I'm going. Okay, so I would probably I'd stick this one on me, and I took responsibility for that chop. Okay, we're gonna watch this uh, guy on the top do this here again. We got a blind side block on that one? I got a blind side block. It kind of looks like the other guy down. The same guy. That's, a, that's the last one. So go, go back real quick, Stephen. We'll look at this one more time. Yeah, my, uh, my wingman didn't see it. Did not see it. <laughs> so how many do we have? Yeah, right. He's probably over there sending me text, dirty text messages right now. Uh, Jack, like, and showing all my misses. Were you crazy? So do we have, do we have, do we have a blindside block on this play? Yes, blindside block on this play. Raise your hand. I got a lot more on this one right here. It's the same daggum play. <laughs> All right, yes, everyone kind of in agreement that we have blindside. Jeremy, do you, do you agree with blindside block on this one? Jeremy says no on this one too. Okay. All right. You're right. <clears throat> really, guys, again, the point of these right here is just so we can all see these type of plays, okay, and understand when, when they occur on the, on the football field, when to have your antennas up and, and be on the lookout for them, okay, because that's what we're going to. That's what we do this for, okay? And when you see things like this on your film, start thinking, start, talk as a crew, okay? Talk as a crew. Whose responsibility was this guy during this play? Who could help on this, okay? Talk about it as a crew. Talk about it as officials, okay? Do a good self-evaluation of your performance when you get to review the films that you work, okay? That's how we all get better, okay? Even if we don't agree, that's how we all get better, right? All right, that's all I've got, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're almost done. We got the Granary Health Foods. Dropped off a bunch of samples back here for all of us guys. I think they, he's trying to say something about us. So uh, they're uh, located just right around the corner here, and so he just wanted to leave us some samples. And if you want to go see him, he left some flyers also. So. Other than that, if you want to run over there and look in there, everything's free to take. So thank you guys. We're dismissed. Oh, meeting next Monday. Thanks.